Previously on David Gansel's very own quite popular armchair Imagineering show. And I think that would be a perfectly satisfying Homestar Runner attraction. Unfortunately, I don't think any major theme park is ever going to invest this much money in an e-ticket based on a seldom updated internet cartoon. So a Homestar Runner ride is unlikely at best. Which is why Homestar deserves an entire theme park, not just one ride, a whole park full of them. I know Strong Bad already did some armchair imagineering of his own. And I've already talked about his armchair Imagineering. The other difference between Bowels of Trogdor and Disney attractions is apparently Bowels of Trogdor catches fire on purpose. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we need a theme park you can bring your grandmother to. So let's design Homestar Runner's Free Country USA, the theme park. Obviously, the gold standard of theme park layout is the Disneyland-style castle park, and it begins right at the entrance. There's something perfect about entering the gate, seeing that floral Mickey in the center, and then going through the tunnels on either side of the beloved character to fully enter the magical world. It's such a perfect design that it's kind of already the design of HomestarRunner.com too. Character in the center, entrances on either side. So we'd have floral Homestar and entry tunnels. I guess the watch intro entry tunnel would have everybody everybody playing on an endless loop. You could have cool uh, LED screens on the sides, that would be neat. Then we could continue parodying Main Street USA's old-timey throwback aesthetic with Free Country USA's old-time Jones Alley. So a uh, couple 1936 buildings with gift shops. Probably more to eat there than parsnips. Now, this could lead to the KOT's castle, again, if we're keeping the Disneyland parody going the whole way. And I know I pitched the KOT's castle as the exterior for the standalone ride because it's probably the most iconic big building exterior in Free Country USA. But let's be real, does the King's Castle really warrant being the hub of the whole park? Is it that central to the Homestar lore? I say no. There is exactly one location that is so iconic that it deserves to have Free Country USA revolve around it, and that is, of course, the stick. Yes, the central land of the park would be the main field that seems to comprise the majority of Free Country USA, with the stick at the dead center. Now, I know what you're thinking. Isn't the stick too small to really be a weenie? And... Yeah, fair, but, uh, if we also get Strong Badia there, that would draw people in. I know neither of those things really have the height to serve as a central location to draw everyone from all corners of the park, but, I mean, neither does Sleeping Beauty Castle. This only became an issue in, like, 1971. Now, the bulk of character meet-and-greets would naturally occur at the stick, world-renowned for its hanging attitude. You'd get to meet mascot characters of Homestar and Strong Bad, as well as mascots of the characters dressed up as other mascots for that extra meta layer. Other photo ops throughout the area would include the RiverQuest Safari Venture, Kazoo and Carrot Hill, and of course, a stand with Onion Bums. Look, an actual Disney park has a popular photo op with a plain potato. This is not so far-fetched. And there's no shortage of food service opportunities. Obviously, you could go to Bub's Concession Stand for a Homestar Junior, or go to Marshmallow's Last Stand for a Mug of Hot Jones, or hit up the Piz for a slice. And you can talk to the Blubbo's drive through Whale, but you can't actually get any food from him. Plus, there would be the Videopolis-esque nightclub, Club Techno Chocolate. And the concert stage featuring nightly appearances from Cool Tape, Sloshy, Tarantula, and Limousine tribute bands. And there would be flat rides here, like the Yellow Dello Carousello and the Pam Pam Balloons. That's Pom Pom Balloon, for those of you who don't speak Coach C. But the thrill ride of the Free Country Field would be an extremely tall, extremely steep, hang time-esque roller coaster, themed to the steep deep. If that's not enough of a weenie for you, I don't know what is. What else would surround the field? The Homestar Runiverse is really quite expansive, so I think there could be all sorts of different little lands here. Of course, there would be loose leaf land inspired by Strong Bad's skills of an artist. Here, everything is drawn on notebook paper. This would feature the Teen Girl Squad Dark Ride, which would be in the style of Mr. Toad or old Carnival Dark Rides, with plywood cutouts of violence swinging out in front of your vehicle and one of the tunnels would go through the arrowed guy's mouth. And with some spilled paint and a big drawing of Trogdor, Loose Leafland would segue into the lush greeneries of Peasantry, with the rather dashing statue in the center. Peasantry would have to include an actual Bowels of Trogdor, but 
one that actually stops occasionally and doesn't set the guests on fire. And inside the Trog Cave, there would also be the Peasant's Quest point-and-click ride venture, which would use a ride system similar to Toy Story Mania, but instead of shooting projectiles, you use the blaster to point-and-click at items on the screen, solving mini puzzles in each room. In other words, you're pointing, you're clicking, it's like a ride venture! And of course, the land would include carnival games, such as Mendelib and Dongolive's archery contest, and a beanbag toss game where you get to throw beanbag baby. The Tomorrowland of this park would of course be Planet K 20 XD6, where you can ask for a challenge in another shooting ride, Cinco Man's Challenge and Riding. This would be suspended vehicles a la Peter Pan's Flight, but designed after the ships in the GAMES menu, and mounted with blasters that you use to shoot animatronics of the various Stinko Man enemies. With two riders and two blasters per vehicle, if you both hit the same target at the same time, it's a double deuce! Planet K would also have the Limousine But They're In Space coaster, which would basically be, you know, Space Mountain and Rock and Roller Coaster mashed up but in cartoon space instead of real space, and with limousine instead of Aerosmith. It's low-hanging fruit. The next land is Dangeresque's Brain Blow City, home of a stunt show where Dangeresque clearly does his own stunts, as well as that arcade at the intersection of Doom and Gloom, featuring real stand-up arcade cabinet versions of Trogdor, Awesome Cross, Population Tire, and many other Vitelectrix games. Plus, there's the Roller-esque Danger Coaster, which culminates in a Batwing shaped like cool, cool glasses. Another land would be the Cheat Commando's Headquarters Playset Land, home of tank bumper cars, a helicopter aerial spinner, a wild mountain called the Commando Coaster, a blue laser tag training arena, and of course, the cheapest free gift shop, where you too can buy all our playsets and toys. And of course, we need an actual physical sweet putt and cakes, insofar as that can be physicalized. Oh, I guess I forgot to print! Also, think of the potential for seasonal events. I would be terrified of a Halloween Homestar Nights maze where around every corner you're being lured to come on in here. I'd be even more terrified of a maze with Marshy. But at the December Ween party, it would be nice to see the Parade of the Santa Men, who may or may not be Blade Men. And I think those would be the most essential elements of a Homestar Runner theme park. But what about you? What would you want to see in a Homestar park? Or just in a Homestar dark ride or motion simulator or any other sort of attraction in a different theme park? Let's discuss this all in the comments. And until next time, this is Dave, signing off. <laughs>